A true Islamic country will scrupulously follow the directives of the Quran. In the Quran, Allah mandates that the Muslims fight against the Jews and the Christians until they pay the jizya, which is a poll tax, with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. The Muslims, of course, are exempt from paying this tax. This verse is the one place where Allah directs Muslims explicitly to make war against and subjugate Jews and Christians, the people of the book, who, once subjugated, enter the dimma, the protection of the Muslims, and become dimmis, or protected people. The Islamic scholar Ibn Juzay says that this verse is a command to fight the people of the book. Muslims must fight them because they consider as lawful carrion, blood, pork, and so on, and because, he says, they do not enter Islam. He says that scholars agree about accepting jizya from the Jews and Christians and adds that the Magians or Zoroastrians have been added to them going by the words of the prophet, treat them as people of the book, although there is disagreement about accepting it from idolaters and Sabians, which means that people who are considered polytheists, they have to convert or die, there is no intermediate stage of so-called protection. He specifies that the tax is not collected from women, children, or the insane and that it signifies submission and obedience. Another Islamic scholar, Asawi, specifies that the payment of the jizya signifies that the non-Muslims are humble and obedient to the judgments of Islam. Asuyudi, another Islamic scholar, notes that the jizya is not taken from someone in a state of hardship, although that was a stipulation at times honored in the breach. For example, a contemporary account of the Muslims' conquest of Nikiu which was an Egyptian town in the 640s, says that it is impossible to describe the lamentable position of the inhabitants of this town who came to the point of offering their children in exchange for the enormous sums that they had to pay each month. Similarly, Ibn Kathir says that the Dimmis must be disgraced, humiliated, and belittled. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of Dimma or elevate them above Muslims for they are miserable, disgraced, and humiliated. The seventh century jurist Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib said, I prefer that the people of the Dimma become tired by paying the jizya, since he, that is Allah, says, until they pay the jizya with their own hands in a state of complete abasement, from the Quran. Another Islamic scholar, as suyudi elaborates that this verse is used as a proof by those who say that it is taken in a humiliating way and so the taker sits, and the dimmi stands with his head bowed and his back bent. The jizya is placed in the balance, and the taker seizes his beard and hits his chin. He adds, however, that this is rejected, according to An-Nawawi, who said this manner is invalid. However, still another Islamic scholar, Zamakshari, agreed that the jizya should be collected with belittlement and humiliation of the non-Muslims. The imperative to subjugate non-Muslims as mandated by the Quran and elaborated by the Pact of Umar remains part of Islamic law to this day. The Pakistani jihadist writer and activist Sayyid Abu Allah Maududi, a 20th century figure, states that the simple fact is that according to Islam, non-Muslims have been granted the freedom to stay outside the Islamic fold and to cling to their false man-made ways if they so wish. That heads off any potential contradiction between his understanding of two verses of the Quran, the one that says that the non-Muslims must pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued, and the other saying there is no compulsion in religion. Maududi continues by declaring that the unbelievers have absolutely no right to seize the reins of power in any part of Allah's earth, nor to direct the collective affairs of human beings according to their own misconceived doctrines. For if they are given such an opportunity, corruption and mischief will ensue. In such a situation, he says, the believers would be under an obligation to do their utmost to dislodge them from political power and to make them live in subservience to the Islamic way of life. On the basis of such teachings, the Islamic State demanded the jizya from the Christians of Mosul in Iraq when it took the city in 2014 and it has now begun to collect it also from the Christians under its rule in Syria. And this remains part of Islamic law to this day. For more information about this, go to this website.